For every 1,000 new residents, we can expect 138 new calls. As Palm Coast's population grows, the city is going to need increased fire services. Battalion Chief Kyle Berryhill spoke at a Palm Coast City Council workshop Tuesday. You guys have seen how much that the city is growing, and that's a continuing trend. But also the rate at which our citizens are consuming fire department services growing. So a few years ago, it was about 10%. Today, it's almost 14%. Palm Coast Fire Chief Jerry Forte is looking at long-range planning in conjunction with Flagler County. We have to plan out the next 50 years of fire stations, where the responses are, where we are and what's working today, what is not working in the city, and then how we can plan these things out with Flagler County and figure out where their stations will be going and not just compete, but we're going to work in, in comparison where they can cover in the city we don't have to cover and where we can cover in the city that they don't have to worry about in the county. We're working that relationship out very well. The department is already planning to build at least two fire stations, a new one in the Seminole Woods area and a mini station near Whiteview Parkway. They're also planning to replace Station 22 on Palm Coast Parkway at Clubhouse Drive. The department's goal is to provide a response time within seven minutes or less. This local news is a service of Flagler County's Toyota dealer, Beaver Toyota US-1 St. Augustine, here to wow you. Two Flagler County Sheriff's deputies killed in the line of duty are remembered in a pair of state ceremonies. Sheriff Rick Staley says the remembrance ceremonies took place on Monday. I escorted detention deputy first class Paul Luciano family, along with Sergeant Frankie Selico family, to Tallahassee, where memorial services were held by the Fraternal Order of Police in the Florida Sheriff's Association. Staley says Luciano died after being diagnosed with COVID-19, and Celico suffered a massive heart attack following a high-stress incident. Both families' fallen heroes, Frankie Celico and Paul Luciano, are now memorialized on the state FOP Memorial Wall and the Florida Sheriff's Association Wall, where they will be forever remembered for their sacrifice serving our community. The Sheriff's Office Motor Unit attended to help escort and honor the families during their stay in Tallahassee. For Flagler's Morning News, I'm Rich Petschke. The FBI continues to warn about rising cases of sextortion both nationally and here in Florida. Teens are being targeted by predators on social media and on gaming apps. Amanda Vidal with Public Affairs for the FBI in Jacksonville cautions one seemingly simple mistake on social media can follow a person. Behaviors online can stick with you essentially for the rest of your life as you try to and achieve certain educational goals, enter into higher education institutions, or obtain professional positions where they conduct social media background checks. Your social media background check plays a role in whether or not you're going to get to that point in your life and achieve those goals in your life. John Finelli, Palm Coast City Councilman and Coordinator of Student Supports and Behavior for Flagler Schools, says technology and cell phone usage come with great responsibility. Just boyfriend and girlfriend where there's peer pressure of, hey, send me a picture, and then they break up, and then that picture gets out, or texting to set up a fight or, or something of that nature. So what I want parents to know and we want to have the conversation about is students have to be ready and responsible enough to handle that technology. And they, they have to know the, the impact and the consequences that come with that responsibility. Finelli says parents should be prepared to take cell phones and other technology away from their children if they're not ready. From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm Amy Cherry. The City of Palm Coast will be holding its 17th Arbor Day event soon. This year's Arbor Day celebrations will commemorate the city's newly recognized commitment to help aid in the recovery of monarch butterflies nationwide by joining Monarch City USA on May 7th from 9 to 1 o'clock at Central Park and Town Center on Central Avenue. Carol Minnie, City of Palm Coast Urban Forester. So we've made a commitment and we have signage that you'll see up around town that's attached to our Tree City USA signs. So we're trying to promote folks to plant more milkweed, those different plants that the monarch love to uh, come to. In addition, a master certified arborist will be in the tree tent from 9 to noon, offering free guidance on proper pruning, placement planning, and root shaving techniques. To get a free tree, bring a non-perishable, non-expired human or pet food item to trade for the tree while quantities last. Admission is free. For Flagler's Morning News, I'm Karen Johnson. 
Is the Palm Coast City Council's decision of giving itself a raise leading to a strong mayor form of city government? On a recent episode of the Business Report here on WNZF, Palm Coast Mayor David Alphen said the council's raise is deserved, but that it's not leading to a strong mayor form of government. He said when questioned that it leads to strong candidate development. In order to run for elected office, I think candidates need to be identified, they need to be mentored, their expectations need to be set, and their skill sets need to be finely honed so they can contribute to all of this complicated westward expansion that we're talking about. Alphen said that voters here don't have enough candidates from which to choose for the November election. Right now, the city runs on a manager-council government, with the council hiring the city manager. Alphen said that raising the council's pay is just one part of getting younger, more diverse people in city government. Catch the Business Report on Saturday mornings at 10 here on WNZF and anytime on the Flagler Radio app. Tomorrow, Alphen talks about making it worth running for office. From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm Deb Albertson. And now you're up to date on Flagler's Morning News. I'm Rich Carroll.